Hi guys, so today we're starting off with a little piece of paper here to have some notes on. Uh, for today's Busted Out, we are going to make like a stepper card. I might show you how to make two or three different uh, sizes of it. Just because once you've done one, you can just figure out the others. But I'll kind of give the numbers for those. I will finish one of the cards. Um, whatever links I have in the description box for maybe some of the items I'm using, of course it's Busted Out. I'm going to use whatever old papers I have. Um, you know, they might not be available anymore, but whatever is available, I have a link in the description box. Those will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items to those links. And the reason I'm like wanting to do this is because recently I've had a lot of questions about people asking if I can do stepper cards um, or like double step, all these different things. And um, these are things I used to do like, I don't know, 15 plus years ago. Um, a lot of it has to do with just scoring and cutting, which a lot of people don't care for. Uh, the one I'm going to show you today, the reason I... Uh, chosen for today is because I was on Craft Stash shopping the uh, Crafter's Companion Dragonfly collection and other fun things Craft Stash has. They have awesome stuff. They have tonic, they have Heartfelt Creations, they have all these different things. They're based in the UK, um, but you know, they ship as, you know, as far as I've experienced with them pretty quickly and then it arrives within like a week or so, um, sometimes less. It just depends, I guess. Um, and then they have free shipping with like over $80 now. I think it used to be over 100 or something because I remember it being higher. But anyway, it's over 80 or maybe it was over 75 Either way, that's what they're doing right now. Um, I'll have some of the things linked there too. But, you know, um, they had a stepper card. Like, you know, as I was looking at the Dragonfly stuff, they had some things at the bottom like you might like or whatever. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I'm looking at it and they even have a video attached to it. But I didn't realize it was sold out already. So I'm like, oh, it's sold out. So I'm going to do it by hand which of course having dies for it is much funner. They have like so many different stepper cards, it's ridiculous, and they have like dies for them. There's like 20 different designs of all these different ways that you can make them, right? Um, really interesting uh, things that you could probably do, but it's just more, you know. So this one I figure is easy enough to create, uh, very similar. I just came up with my own numbers because like I don't know what the numbers are that they used, but it's the design, right? That same um, feel. So what I'm going to make is going to be a six inch card once it's folded up and everything you saw in the intro. Um, and then I was like, well, maybe we can make an A2 size one, but it, it would be really tight and the numbers are kind of ugly. So I'm like, I don't know if anybody would even want to do this, but I'll try to throw that out there. So uh, we'll just get right to it. So what I'm going to do is grab some paper. I think I'm going to grab some 300 GSM card base. I want something nice and thick. What's nice about my numbers is that the paper doesn't have to be uh, like 12 inches wide or some crazy number. It's going to be six by 10 is what we're going to start with. And I hope that works, but I think it will <laughs> um, because once we pushed it over, it should end up being six by six, but we will see. And then I'll give you numbers for like some other size cards and we can talk about that. But right now I'm just gonna grab some paper. I'm probably gonna grab some pink paper because I'm in that mood. And then I'm gonna bring out some paper that hopefully coordinates with it. So I'll be right back. So again, we're gonna start with paper that is six by 10. This is some like heavyweight, extra heavyweight from Hobby Lobby. But of course, any good paper, like your tonic papers and things like that, uh, Crafts Companion or whatever. Um, okay, so six by 10 and this should be an 11 inch piece of paper right it's a bit standard yeah so I'm just gonna take an inch off of this side and not worry about expanding the thing and I am hoping this is going to work if you're new to my channel this is how I do things like I just wrote down some numbers which is amazing usually I don't do that and I know I've had people recently say they don't like what I do because I just open the thing up and start and you know it's like well yeah that's what I do that's that's my shtick you guys that's what I do here because <laughs> when you get home do you have a plan no right I'm not gonna rehearse it and then do something weird I just go for it and hopefully it works out so in my mind if I do my numbers correctly it should right so what we're gonna do with this one to make the stepper is it's gonna be like a score here a cut here score you know score here cut here so we're gonna have to figure all those things out um, it's not too difficult. It's just <laughs> you have to really know where these score lines are going to be. That way you don't have extra score lines. To be honest, in the um, the die that I had seen on Craft Stash, hopefully it comes back in stock soon. I'll still link it even though it's out of stock, but I know sometimes people can like them and then they'll let you know when it's in stock. It seems like it's one of the things they always keep because Craft Stash does like their own dies too, or card making magic or whatever. Um, wherever the die had a line, it made a score line anyway, even though you don't use it. So... For me, if I'm doing this at home, I'm not going to put a whole score line here all the way across because I want this to look nice and pristine. But if you wanted to, you could do that. You don't have to like stop in a weird way or in a weird spot or anything like that. Um, okay, so I'm just trying to think where my lines need to be. Actually, I didn't write that part down. So let me write that part down where the actual score lines need to be, and I'll be right back. So I write down my numbers, and 
again, if you don't mind the score lines just being there, even though you're not going to actually score on them, then you can just take your paper and do your score lines and you'll have a line that you're not going to use. But I'm actually going to switch out from this score master to a different type of thing because this is what we used to do back in the day and I totally forgot. So um, if you have a scoreboard, kind of like the Martha Stewart one or these other ones where it has the lines at the top and you just have the score lines, but on the side it has another ruler, that would help. I only have like that score master one. I mean, I do have the Martha Stewart one. I just didn't pull it out. I just pulled out one of my, these guys, just a regular old paper trimmer because what happens with this is that you do have lines going this way numbers you know you have numbers here so you can make these score lines without having to put in any extra ones that aren't going to be used this one actually has this little piece this is so funny i don't even remember when i got this but i do remember that it had a scoring blade and, and when i pulled it out i thought oh is that the scoring blade but the scoring blade is actually gray so this is the cutting blade but um but we will use that and actually i don't even know if this one's sharp or anything this is pretty old it's cricket look at that i do have an updated one from tonic i just didn't bring that out this one was the easiest one right under me that i grabbed so i just pulled it out because what we're going to do with our paper is a couple different things. And I don't want to confuse people, but at the same time, it gets a little a little confusing, okay? So we have our paper that's 6 by 10. And I probably would write on this, but I don't want to write on it. So what I'm going to do is basically we're going to do the same score lines, but opposite. So on this side, we're going to do 6 and 8. On this side, we're going to do 2 and 4. It doesn't really matter. It's going to be symmetrical. It's basically the same. You're just doing the opposite way. And then, Sorry, excuse me. And then over here, we are putting a score line at either 4 inches or at 2 inches, depending on how you look at it. You need to put this score line here. And this one, again, at 2 or at 4, but this way. So it's symmetrical. I mean, if I turn it, it's the same thing. So we're just going to pick a side to start with. So I'm going to pick this side, 10-inch side over here. And I'm going to set this. I'm going to push this in here so it's already 2 inches in, okay? So I'm lining it up with two inches, okay? And I'm still going to use a scoring tool. Now, this thing, like I said, has a scoring blade. I don't know where it is, so I'm not going to worry about that. But the first score line we want to put in here, and you can do this, um, you know, going up the other direction first, or you can slide it in and go this way first. Whatever it is that you want to do, um, do that. But I'm just, uh, just going to start with these kind of ugly numbers, okay? So I'm going to line up my little uh, scoring tool at two inches roughly right right in that groove where you normally would cut right i would use the cut line um fiskars has some that have like a wire metal uh wire strand so you can see exactly where you're at just kind of move it over and you know still do this so we're roughly getting where we need it to be i know it's it's handmade guys so we need to go from two we need to score this for four inches so that means we're gonna go past four and we're gonna go right over to six inches Okay, so from two inches to six inches, we're scoring two inches in. So two inches of papers over here from two to six. Okay, now I can just move this over and continue going, um, or you can take it out and turn it around. So that's the score lines we just did this score line, which we're actually going to cut, but for right now it's a score line. And actually, if I really wanted to, I could just bring this over and cut it, um, which maybe I'll do. If you don't have this, that's kind of why I'm talking about it first and then cutting later. You know, maybe I'll just cut it later because... Okay, the reason I was going to do all the score lines and then do the cutting is because just in case you don't have this kind of trimmer, you want to still know. Just put all your score lines in and then we'll cut it later. And I'll still talk about how to do that. So for right now, I can just line this up on the 6 or go to the 2 and then come this way. It doesn't matter. But either way, we're going to cut that. So that does need to be a cut line. And I'm just using the little guides to help me go from 2 to six okay and now I'm gonna move this out of the way hopefully and not cut anything I'm just gonna pick this up I don't want to cut anything more I just want to get this out of here this is a weird little piece because it just like clips in um, okay so now two inches in from two to six inches is where we put a score line okay now I'm gonna move this over to the four inch line so four inches and here we're gonna do a little bit differently <laughs> so on this one we're going to start from the eight inch right so we have a little two inch piece here so at eight inches up to four so you can start from four to eight or whatever but that's where your score line so if i had this i would still butt it in here let's say four to eight so i would just stop there but since i have this cutting tool i'm going to go ahead and put it down at the eight inches and push it up to the four and I already cut that line, but you can cut it later, okay? So for right now, we're just putting score lines. So four inches in 
from four to eight or eight to four, however you want to look at it. And those are the only ones we're doing there. So I'm going to take this out of here. It's not going to be pretty because, like, well, actually, I can just pull this up. You unclip it <laughs> and then take this out. So it has, this thing is just weird. It has these little clippies that hold it in. Okay, so right now this is what we've got. I'm just being very clear about this. So hopefully, six by ten, two inches in, we're going to do a score line from two to six. And then we're going to do a score line from four to eight four inches in right it looks really nice actually pretty cool I don't even know if that like I said I don't even know if that blade actually cut I don't think it did to be honest so we're still gonna cut it anyway weird now uh, that I looked at it and it looks like metal because I was like maybe this is the scoring blade but no it's a cutting blade it just doesn't work okay so that's fine we're gonna cut it together anyway now I'm gonna turn my paper so this is the side that has the two inches in that's from two to however but if you turn it this way I want you to notice it's the same <laughs> right it's symmetrical it doesn't matter but on this side where we went in two inches up we're going to start there and all we're going to do is place our paper actually I'm going to get this out of the way put that back down and at two inches in. okay sorry so we placed it two inches in and we already have our little score line or cut line whatever it is but now it's at four just because the way we put this in it says four right so anyway from here down we're going to make a score line that is a score line we are not cutting that okay and now we're going to move this over to four inches. And okay, so we did ours from that cut line or score line, two inches in, we made a score line. This next one, actually, I was just going to do the bottom, but you actually need it to go from this, the first score line that you made, that cut line, which is now at number two. You're going to go from there all the way down. So we've moved it over to four inches, and from that, two inch cut line from the top we're just going to score from there all the way down okay so put your score lines and that's going to leave you a score line that's going to kind of push in and then now from here we're just going to move this now you can keep going or you can turn your paper around if you don't have a, an extension and you don't have measurements to help you out um, what I'm saying is you can take this out right turn it around and do the exact same thing do the little two inches and then the four inch one but we're just going to keep moving over so now I'm going to move over another two inches so that means I'm going to put this at six inches and for this one we're going to go from the top to this two inch score line that we have down here the two inch score line right so from the very top down so from here to right to that score line okay and hopefully you have some good heavyweight paper you got some good score lines and now we're going to move over to eight inches and only going to do from the top to that two inch score line that's up here right so the score lines are always two inches from the top and the bottom and then it leaves this space in the center so from here we're just going to go from there right to our little score line and that is it so i'm going to put this here so you guys can see what this looks like all right so this is the cut line again two inches up starts at two inches and it ends at six inches and then this one two inches down or four inches up however you want to look at it starts at four inches and goes over to eight and then the other score lines are just a little score line right here that score line that goes from the middle all the way down the score line that goes from this part all the way up I call it middle but it's not really middle all the way up and then just the one that goes from the line up and they're all two inch increments okay so it makes it really easy now like I said I wasn't sure that this cut and it didn't so what I'm gonna do is just take a craft knife and cut it which is not my favorite because a lot of times you can be off on that but if you have a trimmer and you know I don't want to pull another trimmer out um, you can just line it up and cut it what I'm gonna do is the other day when I was cleaning up you guys oh my goodness I found this on the floor and I was like oh that's real safe I always tell the kids don't go don't come in here because this is this place is crazy okay so uh, I'm just lining it back up on my score line so you're cutting again where is that right there down to and I'm staying right close to my ruler, hopefully, and hopefully that went all the way through. Yay! So that's your cut line. So again, if you're only scoring, you don't have the trimmer that can help you do what I was showing you, then this is what you would do anyway. I'm going to line this up on a number that makes sense, because for right now, there we go. It's hard for me to see where I began and ended. Okay. Right there. Oopsie. Okay. that's all it is okay and then from here you can bend these things forward or back but basically this piece let's start here score 
score, score, because this piece is going to overlap that way. So we're just pushing, pushing, pushing. So hopefully you can kind of see what we're doing already. And that's basically it, you guys. Now I'm going to push it over nice and careful, making sure I'm not like tearing anything since this is handmade. It might be a little bit off here and there. So what I'm going to do is center this in a nice way so it looks good. And now I can score, score, like if I really want to give it a good scoring. So the dies on, you know, this set that I had seen. Um, so look, that's your card. Pretty cool. And if you want it to be this way, then you can have it be this way. If you want to fold, you know, it doesn't matter. If you want it to be this other side, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Uh, for me, I think I'm going to put it this way. Now, the way they set up the dies to decorate this, now you can definitely plan something out like this. It would be hard to do. So that's, you know, ugh. Not something I'm going to do. This is a 4-inch square, and these are 2-inch squares. So basically, I'm going to cut some matte layers that will fit a 4-inch area, 2-inch areas. You need 1, 2, 3 of that, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you need 7 2-inch square mats, and then you need 2 4-inch square mats. I hope that makes sense. So whatever you want to do with that, that's 3 by 7, 8, because you like it nice and tight. If you like 3 and 3 quarter inch squares, and then these guys can be 1 and 7 eighth inch squares or, you know, 1 and 3 quarter inch squares, whatever it is to decorate this. So I'm going to grab some papers and we will uh, do that. I'll be right back. So I just went through some paper pads. So this is old. Uh, I think I got it last year. It's not super, super old, but again, busted out. You know, I try to use things that I, are at least a few months old, <laughs> but I did buy this last year. It's the quintessentially English paper pad. And what's cool about this one is in the back it has these guys so I can do pretty much make my whole card from this but I love the colors that are in here but I also love matting and black layers so what I'm gonna do is take this I'm gonna cut two layers that are three seven eighth inch squares because that's what I like so this will be right in here just that little crisp black so I need two of those and then I'm gonna cut the seven squares that I need to go one two three um, and those are sorry yeah one two three uh, one and seven eighth inch squares. Let me just make sure. Yeah. So I'll be right back. I'm just gonna cut this down. See if you have like Anna or any, you know, the square the square dies that are like in the uh, die and press compendium. So pretty because you can just layer things up like that. Of course, right now I'm just gonna do matte layers, but that would be very nice. I feel like this video is kind of quick. Hopefully, I'm sorry. I just repeated the numbers a lot just so you guys could uh, write them down if you wanted to. But it's really easy, especially with this one, because they're all even numbers. And even if you forget it later, like, it's just, remember, it's two-inch squares, so, like, the little two-inch areas. And let me tell you a little bit about the math as far as that. The reason this is 6 by 10 and, like, 6 by 12, because you want a six-inch card when you're done, is because these two inches that layer over each other, you need two down and two over. So that's four plus the six-inch side, so that's ten. I mean, that's, that's, all, that's all the math is, you know? Even though you would think, oh, I probably need to start with, like, a bigger... Nope, you don't. Um, 6 by 10. And so, roughly in my head, if I was doing the 4 by 6, like an A4, again, we, you know, if you want the three steps in that one, or if you want just two steps, because it's kind of tighter, skinnier, whatever is you like. And I can flatten this out. I don't know why I'm keeping it the shape. And then in each one of these little squares, I'm just going to put a little... A little matte on this one you're kind of making it up because this piece is solid so again if there was a score line there people probably wouldn't notice it i just prefer to make score lines where i need them and not where i don't leave it at that but like in this one it definitely has score lines all around so you can definitely see where you're supposed to place this but since i placed the other one i will make sure that they're pretty much more in line with each other and again just keep going I used to love making cards like this, like I said, like those napkin fold cards where it has just a lot of things and they kind of fold back so long ago. Okay, and I'm just going to place these last two here. And, well, not these last two, last four, I guess. Two there and two here. So again, I made mine one and seven eighth inch squares and then three and seven eighth inch squares, okay? okay. But I'll be right back. So we have that. You can write on the back, you know, you can put another layer of note card or whatever it is that you like for that. Um, so what I'm going to do is go through this and find something that has like a smaller look. I'm thinking probably that one. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Oh, that's so cute, these little dots. I mean, you can do whatever you want, obviously. Oh, this is such pretty paper. Look at this one. 
Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> That's tough because that pink dot's really cute too. I think I want to use this one because it has a smaller perspective. And I'll put that in the little squares and then like accent it with some of the larger. So let me get this one. I was thinking these two because they really pair off each other real well. But why don't we do this? And in the bigger squares, we'll do that pink with the foiling, this one. So I'm going to cut this down. Oh, sorry guys for the rough edit. Oh my gosh. Um, I just realized I was misspeaking. So I'm just going to show you the papers, even though maybe I went through it with you. Um, the the mat layer, sorry. I gave you all these numbers for like the different types, but I kept saying two and three quarters or twos. It's three, sorry. So, okay. So for this one with the smaller perspective, I'm going to cut the mat layers that will go into these, the two inch spots. Sorry guys, I'm telling you. My son just walked in, so I was like, ah, okay. So for these two inch spots, I had made mats that are one and seven eighth inch. If you like quarter inches, you would have made them for one and three quarter inches, right? So right now for this little mat layer, I'm gonna do, for me, one and three quarter inches, because these are already one and seven eighths. If you already did one and three quarters, because that's what you prefer to use, you know, go one and a half, right? Uh, for this next mat layer. You're gonna have really big edges, but they're not gonna be like so big, it's fine. Uh, if you don't like working at eighths. And then these guys are already three and seven eighths for me. If you like quarters, you would have done three and three quarter inch mats. So right now I'm going to cut this bigger one to three and three quarter inches. I just need two of them, clearly. If you already did three and three quarter inches for this first mat, because that's what you like, then you're going to do like three and a half inches, right? So I'm going to get those cut down and I'll be right, right back. So I just, you know, you cut the one three quarter inch strip and then cut one three quarter, one three quarter, one three quarter off that same strip. It took a strip and one block. <laughs> so a whole strip, I was able to get most of them. So now I'm just gonna glue these guys down. You can glue them down in order the way you cut them if you like that, you know, kind of consistency. Like what I'm trying to say is, I don't even know where I was, but let's say is these pair up. No, these, no. <laughs> See, nope, nope, not there either. I already mixed them up, so it doesn't really matter. But um, if you like to keep them in order of like the way you cut them on the strip, then I would do that. Where is this butterfly? Looks like he's going that way. Okay. That's one thing. I don't want to put my butterflies like upside down. Um, although the flower looks like it's upside down, but that's okay. The butterfly's flying that way. Yesterday I was watching butterflies fly all around my um, passion fruit. I'm not sure what they were so uh, in love with there. But you know, ants like to crawl on that too, and I guess it has some sweetness to it somehow. Uh, let's put this one over here. So I'm just going to place those guys. Oh, that one's not even close. What's going on here? <laughs> Let me redo that. Let's put that one to the side for now. Huh, I wonder if that one's off the black mat or this one. Let's see. We will see which one is off. Oh, interesting. How did this one work out so well when the other ones are a little bit wonky? Again, I had to cut them, you know, by hand here. Let me see. And yes, it has glue on it, so let's, you know, one and three quarters. Hmm. That's weird. I wonder if I used the wrong uh, square here. I'm going to skip that one over. Anyway, I'll keep placing these. I'm going to redo this one if I have to put another black mat on top because that one's a little tiny. And I'll just keep working. Okay, okay so I'll be fun. back. I've done this live, I think. So yeah, that one black square was just like off for some reason. So I just cut a new one and when I placed it over it, it totally covered the other one. So it was off by like probably an eighth of an inch, you know? So that's another thing that's nice about having dies, right? It's going to be right on. <laughs> But this is so pretty. Look, I planned that one to be there. So when you cover it, you see a little bit of that butterfly sticking out there. But however as you like. And this one. See, this is funny because, you know, they're flowers. So they're going all over the place. I feel like this one should be facing up. But at the same time, that one's facing up more than the other one. So we'll use this one. And then I'm just going to go through that paper pack since it has its own little tags and other cute things. Um sentiments and all of that that we were going to pop on here oh my gosh you guys how pretty is that oh my gosh okay let me clean up a little bit and then i'll go through the paper pack and see what else i would like to top this out this one's cute it has this little it opens up completely have that little guy maybe you can even go over here i mean you can do whatever you want obviously this whole thing can you can decorate all these little whatever there's lots to do um I think I'm going to do this especially for you because that leaves it kind of generic and I can use it for different occasions. That's cute. And then something else maybe. 
I don't like covering things up, you guys know that, <laughs> but uh, it feels like it needs a little something else. And then I'm just going with this. Obviously, we have tons of dies and stamps and dies and all these different things we can do. Uh, flourishes, you know, our Anna Griffin stuff. Let me see how big this is. Yeah, maybe something like that just to fill it out. Oh, cute. Okay. Um, so, let's see. This one definitely will just be glued down. I'm just going to tuck it in there just so I still have an idea of where I was putting it. Kind of glued down in there. And then this guy also be glued down. I'll put some dimensionals on this. This guy can be kind of like right in here again. And I'll put some dimensionals on this guy. This guy I'm going to kind of just glue down the center part. Oh, this is going to be a fun thing to do with like our tropical swap when you get your items in. <laughs> and I always like things kind of going out that way. Oh, Alright, let me get some dimensionals, dimensionals on, on there. And it look like that. And I'll pop this right here. Oh my gosh, you guys, this busted out. You know, honestly, it re totally, oh, yeah, rejuvenated, totally my... rejuvenated my love of the paper trimmer because, like, I've been using guillotine, 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 and that's great, but the other one does have ways to use it for a scoreboard and whatever you're going to do, and then, you know, it cuts in those preci precise places. Obviously, my blade was dull, but if it was, like, a tonic one or, you know, Fiskars or whatever, you can just cut where you need and then score where you need, and look at this. It packs a lot of punch. It is paper intensive, which is what we need, guys, when you use up our papers. And look how pretty that is. It's like a whole composition with the cute little squares. So it doesn't have to be like just one piece that covers everything. Like, I like the way this looks, like its own little thing. Yeah, little doodads here and there. Oh my gosh. And then on the back, I mean, you have plenty of room to write, or if you want to put another matte layer and write on that, that is really pretty. I might have to um, strain that out. It's a little bit crooked. <laughs> but. Let's say you're going to do a 4 by 6 card. Now, the reason I'm not going to do an A2 size is because the numbers were horrendous. Like, it's horrible because you need the whole 4 and a quarter, like this. I'll explain it here. You need the whole 4 and a quarter, right? This whole thing. And then you need the pieces that fold back on each other. So those pieces that fold back on each other are going to be 2 and an eighth each you know, one. 2 and an eighth, 2 and an eighth. The four and a quarter. Okay, so let's pretend because it's going to be smaller. So it's going to be really skinny steps on the five and a half inch side. How do you divide that by three? The half inch part, right? And you don't have to have it perfect. I guess you could do like, I guess you could do like, let's say one inch, one inch, and live this middle section three and a half inches. You know what I'm saying? So it has like little strips here. They're going to be smaller, but this step is bigger. That's something we can think about. Um, there's ways to get around it. I just wasn't going to do that right now. I'll just quickly quickly give you the numbers for a 4 by 6 so That's going to be easy, and then we'll be done for today. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, guys, you know what? Um, I was going to try and go ahead and get the numbers to make um, like a 4 by 6 or an A2 size. It's going to be a little more work than I thought because I really had to put more thought into it. Um, and I really do want it to be a three-step type of thing. So I'm not going to do that today in this video because it's already taken me like 10 minutes to even think about it. And I've tried a couple mock-ups and I'm like, that's not working. That's not working. So I'll do that in a different video. I'm so sorry. But for this one, we learned how to make this six-inch uh, square card. I'm sorry. I came in with the best intentions, but it's just not going to work today. Uh, I will come up with it. Um, and very soon okay so thanks for watching guys i'll have links for whatever might be available but other than that you know get out that paper trimmer and scoreboard whatever it is that you like to use and uh, all your pretty papers and have some fun i'm really in love with this it feels so nice all right guys um i'll see you at the next one bye now